So today, we're working on this. Stay tuned. Hi guys, so for those of you that don't know, my name is Michael and I am the woodworker for MK Designs. And yeah, I had a customer come to me June, July, somewhere in there. I don't remember exactly when. Uh, and they they wanted some planter boxes and some lattice panels to be able to protect their fence because their dogs attack, try to attack other dogs on the other side of the fence and they're destroying their fence. <laughs> so they wanted something to be able to separate the dogs from the fence a little bit and they decided they wanted planters and lattice panels so I went out to their house and I looked and I made a few suggestions and we wound up deciding on six lattice panels three of them would be freestanding and five planter boxes um, three two with a lattice panel between each planter box so I, there's one set of two planter boxes with a lattice panel and then there's a set of three planter boxes with two lattice panels and then the three standalone lattice panels so i got i got started working on it and colorado decided to have a real winter and it was like every other day we were getting snow or it was too cold to work out here even with the heater and wind and it was just a mess and then cat <laughs> most of you know back in may of last year almost a year to tomorrow will actually be a year today today's may 4th and tomorrow's may 5th so a year ago tomorrow she felt and was walking out of the garden slipped and broke her foot <laughs> So we got that fixed, but part of the reason that she slipped was because her knee gave out. And so she wound up having to have that knee replaced. Well, she's starting to recover from that knee surgery and all of a sudden her other knee gave out and it has to be replaced. So <laughs> that left me having to take care of her, make sure she got around, make sure she got her meds, make sure she went to PT make sure she had everything that she needed because she she works from home um and so i had to make sure that she had everything she needed to be able to work sitting on the couch and yeah taking care of everything else so out here kind of fell to the wayside for a minute <laughs> but everything's back to normal now she's starting to get around she's feeling the pain of not being able to do anything for a year she was just out in the garden trying to get some things done a couple days ago and it wore her out so quick that she had to take breaks constantly and that's driving her crazy she's lost a lot of her upper body strength she's trying to get that back but everything's pretty much back to normal so i'm back out here working i finally got these things done for the client and they absolutely loved them i took them out there with my oldest son that still lives at home um and got them installed and i wasn't able to get footage of the installation but it's fairly straightforward and i'll go over that towards the end of the video so yeah this is how i did it oh and one more thing so one of the reasons i decided to make the lattice panels myself was price i could actually build the lattice panels cheaper than if i bought them and that way I could customize them exactly the way I wanted. That's part of the reason why a lot of my ads and stuff on my Facebook channel and my website will say custom woodworking because I actually do custom work. I don't have a blank form that I'm, I do and I make and I make and I make. Anything that I build, anything that I sell, I can actually customize it the way the customer wants it. I do have the plain Jane version of everything, but I can also add customizations here and there. And that's one of the reasons why it says custom woodworking. Um, so anyway, yeah, that was one reason uh, I could customize it the way I wanted to. And that's the great thing about making your own lattice panels is yeah, it's a lot of work, 
but you can make it any size, any shape, anything you want. All you have to do is have the right spacers, decide how you, exactly how you want it laid out, and then just lay it out and then put it together. And yeah. So with that being said, here's how I did all that. Okay, so the first thing I did was I cut the pieces down to rough size and I needed um, four four foot pieces and then two eight foot pieces and in order to cut all the strips out of and what I did was I planed them down I did this mostly to get two smooth sides and to get them all the same thickness I'm making three to quarter inch thick panels so I'm gonna need three eighths inch um, thick lattice pieces and I, these boards all were a little over an inch and a half so I, I had room to plane them down and get them smooth that way it gets rid of some of the splinters and I have them all the same thickness. Once I have them all planed down to an inch and a half thick then I'm going to rip one edge off and then I'll flip it over and rip the other edge off and then I can proceed to cut my strips. So while I was doing this, I tried a few different methods to get these strips cut. Like I said, I was wanting to cut them at three-eighths of an inch thick. That way I wound up with three-quarter inch thick lattice. And I tried a thin rip gauge. I actually ordered one and tried it. And then I also tried a featherboard using it as a thin rip gauge. And in the end, I found out that the best way to do this is to actually just set my fence at three-eighths of an inch and just rip one right after the other. Um, if you're a little worried about how close it is to the blade, obviously you can add a sacrificial fence and that'll give you the protection that you're seeking but this is by far the easiest and quickest way to get this done and now it's time to start putting the panels together so i've got this straight edge rip guide that i've had for a very long time i don't remember who makes it anymore um, but i'm sure you can find it on amazon uh anyway i got that and i set it up with some clamps to hold it in place and i've got this harbor freight straight edge cross cut guide um, it's a saw guide and I put it on the edge just take a square and square the two up and then clamp the Harbor Freight one down This doesn't make I mean, I suppose I could do it freehand, but this makes it so much simpler to do Once I have my clamps and my straight edges in place then I'm going to start laying my long strips out and I, I do that first by putting the first board flush against the long straight edge and then I've got these three inch by three inch blocks because I want a three inch space between each of the lattice pieces. And I, I place them in, then I place my second piece, and then I just keep going on down the line until I get them all laid out. Next, I want to lay out my shorter pieces, and I'm going to put glue on each one of where the long pieces and the short pieces meet. And so I'm going to lay out the glue, then I'm going to lay the piece down, get the blocks pushed in where I need them to be, and then staple them down from there. Now on this whole thing I am starting in one corner and working my way to the other and I'm using uh, 5 8 inch crown staples for the staples in this and it wound up holding really well together and all the panels came out very strong and durable and I think they're gonna last for a very long time. The hardest part of the whole thing with doing the panels is getting started. Once you get this first edge started and you can just work your way across and it becomes simpler and simpler the further down the line you go. You just have to make sure you get everything straight and square so that it doesn't rack on you or it doesn't look weird when you take it out. So once I have the panels assembled, then I want to get started working on the frames. And I'm just using a 2x4 piece of cedar, so I'm going to get them all, all four pieces cut down to the same width. And then I'm going to run a 3 quarter inch dado in the middle. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to cut half of it, a little more than, a little more than about half an inch on one side. Then I'm going to rotate the board and run it down the other side, other way. And that should give me my space in there and that'll put my dado dead center of the board and it'll be in the same spot on all four pieces so everything will line up the way it's supposed to and if you have a little bit of piece in the middle you can just take that out with a chisel smooth it out and you're good to go
Once I have my dados cut out, then I'm gonna start putting the pieces on, making sure they fit. And if it's a little too tight or a little too, if it's a little too tight, you can take it back and move your fence a little bit and cut the dado a little bit wider. Um, if it's a little too loose, uh, you can either cut a new piece or you can figure out a way to make it work. But you want a little bit of a tight fit. You don't want it over tight, but you definitely don't want it too loose. It, it can move in there a little bit, but you don't want it to move a whole lot. So the way I'm going to assemble these, I'm going to attach the long sides first, and I want them over long because, and that'll, that'll be explained here shortly. And then I'm going to put a clamp on it, put just a little bit of pressure, just enough to hold them together, make sure they don't slip out. Then I'm going to measure and I'm going to cut the smaller pieces to fit. And it's a little more work, but you want everything to come as flush as possible for when you actually go to assemble it. Okay, I didn't want to use any screws or anything like that in this, so the way I'm going to attach these is I'm going to I, I made a couple marks where they're dead center of the short board and drilled some holes, and then I'm going to put a hardwood dowel in it. I, I use white oak for this because it's going to be an outdoor piece, and white oak will hold up better. And I put those in and with a little bit of glue, and once I get all four in, two on each side, then I cut off the excess of the long boards and the way I do this I just attach a little piece of scrap about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch thick with a piece of double sided tape and that that will allow me to cut it off and I have to sand it a little bit more but sanding ingrain on cedar is not that difficult um, but yeah it keeps me from make, putting any marks on it and cutting into the short board that way I can keep my saw close to it but not too close and once the glue is set on the dowels, I just trim them off with the flush trim saw. Now I'm sure you probably noticed that I ran the dados all the way along the long boards and then I cut them off. So the way I'm going to fill this is I'm going to use part of the cutoff that I have and I'm going to cut a piece off to fit in there and I'll glue it in then I'll cut it off with the flush trim saw. And now it's time for everyone's favorite part of every project, that necessary evil sanding and it's a lot of sanding on these okay so now I'm going to get started on the feet for the freestanding lattice panels and so I'm going to cut them to rough length the 4x4 is the rough length then I'm going to run them over the joiner on two sides and get them flat and smooth after that I'll run them through the planer and on the other two sides and get them down to the right thickness and smooth out those sides. Once I have that done then I will take them over to the miter saw and I'll cut a 45 degree angle off of one edge then I will measure for the other edge and cut that off. That way I have two opposing 45 degrees on both sides of the feet. Okay once I have that done I am going to go to putting the vertical piece on. I want a vertical piece that sets into the 4x4 four four feet that will actually attach to the lattice panel itself and that's what will hold it to the feet and it will make it a little more sturdy. The lattice panel will sit on the inside of the 4x4 four four and the vertical piece will be coming up from the outside and that will be holding it. That way any kind of wind that we get or anything like that will help keep it more stable. So I'm marking where I want it to go and then I'm going to cut and chisel it out. So the easiest way I found to do this is I'm going to use my Japanese pull saw and I'm going to cut it kind of like I would a hand cut dovetail. I'm going to cut the edges on the vertical lines to the horizontal lines. Then I'm going to take a drill and hog out most of the material and then I'll take a chisel to it and clean it out. And it should look something like this once you're done. So once I have it done, and you can see if your chisel is dull, that it's going to tear the fibers. So you need to make sure that your chisels are sharp when you're doing this. But um, yeah, once you have that, then you're going to I'm going to just put some glue in, and then I'll place the vertical piece in, and get it squared up, and put some screws in it to hold it in place. And the feet are pretty much done, other than some sanding and cleanup. And now it's time to start working on the boxes themselves and I'm using some dog ear fence panels fence pieces for the panels the individual panels that are going to be that are going to make up the boxes and 
the reason I'm using these is because one, they were the right thickness and they just have that look about them. And it's, it's hundred percent cedar. They work great. You can cut them down. I don't have to mill them. I just cut them and put them in place. Nine times out of 10, they're pretty straight. So I got them cut down to width and then I cut them to length and then it's time to assemble. Now the way I'm going to put these panels together is I made this little jig, some scrap MDF and plywood that I had laying around. And what it does is it allows me to put all my pieces, all my vertical pieces together and allows me to get the correct spacing for my horizontal pieces. So I, I lay my vertical pieces in, then I glue up the one of the first horizontal piece and I lay it in and I staple it in. I'm using, again, I'm using five eighths inch staples on this. And then I've created these two spacer blocks that I put on the other side of the parallel piece. And that allows me to attach the second parallel piece. And just ignore my mother's finger there. She came over to help me record and put her finger in the way. So once I have all the panels done, then I need to get started on the posts. And I'm going to do the 4x4s the exact same way I did for the feet for the fit, uh, lattice panels. And I'm going to run them over the joiner and then run them to the planer. And does anyone notice anything different? So I actually did record the footage of court cutting the dados out in the 4x4s. Problem is, apparently I had the camera, the foot of my tripod on the saw it was touching the saw so it was vibrating so bad that the video just did not come out and unfortunately I did not notice it until I started putting all this together but basically what I did was I cut a dado on the corner pieces I cut one on one edge and then perpendicular to that I cut it on the other edge and then in the middle I just cut it on two parallel sides and the panels slide into the dados and then I just staple them in I didn't use any glue here because of the way wood expands and that that would allow it to expand a little bit and the glue won't be trying to hold it in place and have it fall completely apart. Now here I'm using inch and a half crown staples. Now for the top I'm wanting to put just a 2x4 frame around the top of it and so I'm going to cut my 2x4s down to the same width and then I'll cut a 45 in them and cut them to length and fit them together pretty much like you do a picture frame and I'll staple them to hold them in place temporarily and then I'll drive some screws into them. So once I have the boxes completely assembled then I'll sand everything smooth and just go and double check everything get everything cleaned off and then it's time to seal it and I'm using a an Olympic clear wood outdoor wood protector and sealer from Home Depot. You can spray this stuff on with a garden pump sprayer. Uh, I decided to pull out my uh, HVLP to get, make it go a little bit faster for me. That way I don't have to continuously pump that thing up. But yeah, so you just spray it on, get an even coat on it, and do one or two coats, whatever it takes. Okay, so yeah, that's how I did it. And it, it, it's it's a lot of work don't get me wrong it is a lot of work for each of the lattice panels it took at least a day sorry i had to move the camera a little bit but it, it took a day to get everything cut milled cut and then one panel glued up so for all six panels it took six days and the reason it takes so long is because of laying each piece now if i was making a lot of these i probably would build a separate table that's a little oversized you know so the the panels were four by eight roughly so i'd make the table probably five by nine and permanently lay out a grid and that way i could just take the the lattice pieces as i was cutting them and just lay them in the slots and then glue nail or staple and that'd be that and it would make it a whole lot easier, a whole lot faster to go. That way I could spend a day cutting all the pieces, getting everything ready to go. And then the next day I could come back and just start laying them out, get one done, pull it off, start the next one, so forth and so on. I didn't have to keep moving the, the spacer blocks and all that. And the planter boxes themselves, they, they went by fairly quickly because it was very simple. And I love that little jig that I made um, to be able to space the panels themselves 
evenly and that way it, it made it putting everything together super quick ideally for a finish on these i would probably want to use like a marine varnish or um a spar urethane or something along those lines uh, it lasts longer you still have to maintain it but it's not as bad it's not, it's not as often you don't have to maintain it quite as often whereas with the stuff that i use you need to do it at least every two years if not every year and yeah i explain that to the client they're completely happy as a matter of fact when i explained to them what they needed to do to maintain it she was like that's it oh i can do that that's not that's not that big a deal <laughs> so like i said they were extremely happy with it and i'm extremely happy that they were extremely happy and I, I felt bad that it took so long, but she understood. They worked with me, I worked with them, and it was all good in the end. Okay, so as far as the installation goes, um, the way I did it, you saw how I built the um, freestanding panels. Those I just set in place and then put some bricks or rocks or whatever I could to level them out and get them stable. And with those big feet on them, and them being up close to the fence, uh, any of the winds that we get in this area should take care of it, and they shouldn't fall over. If they do, obviously, if something breaks, I'll try and get it fixed for them as best I can. Uh, but installing the boxes, uh, I set them in place, and then I set a lattice panel between them, and all I did was drive two deck screws, or two or three deck screws, to connect the panels to the boxes. I, I did the screws the exact same way I did the stands for the freestanding ones. And it, it worked out great. I got everything level, everything straight. And then once I had all everything in place, I went back and lined it. I sat, I sat the boxes down on landscape fabric because they, where they wanted them was all rocks and they wanted to be able to plant them and they want to be able to move them as well. And this just meant, this will make it easier to move. And then I line the inside with landscape fabric as well. And what that does is, as we all know, wood expands and contracts. And the panels are going to expand and contract this way. That's part of the reason why I did the dados oversized and I didn't glue them into the dados. I just stapled them in. That way it le left it free to be able to move and contract and do what it needed to do. But by the time I actually got them up there and installed, there was already a small gap between each of the boards. And the landscape fabric, what that does is it allows the dirt to stay in and not come out through the, through the cracks. And it also protects the inside from the soil and all that. So it, the boxes will last a little longer. And that, that's the main thing, is making, allowing them to last longer. So that's how I did the install. That's how I built everything. And I've got another project coming up. I'm in the middle of working on it. I'm about halfway done right now. And as a matter of fact, you can see it right there. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> You'll have to wait for the video. But I hope you join me for that one. So until next time, guys, happy creating.